Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having an absolutely magical day today. Today we are answering a question that's been asked over and over and over again by all of us. Do you wait for something new to open and be there on opening day, or do you give it time so the crowds are less intense? Today I'm gonna to do my best to answer that for you. Now I'll be the first to admit that I love coming to the opening of new attractions. You get this intense feeling when you're there. You feel like you're really part of the magic as something is changing at Walt Disney World and something as big as the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which is behind us here, opening relatively soon is something that we can all get excited about. But there is a flip side to something like Cosmic Rewind opening up the super intense crowds that it brings with it. So there's no question that there is a tremendous amount of excitement and anticipation around something brand new, like a new restaurant even, Space 220, super excited about that. But the question remains, is it worth it? Is it worth the wait? Is it worth coming with the super intense crowds or should you give it more time? Going to the opening of Flight of Passage is something I will never forget. That was an experience unlike any other. You can tell I was so excited about it and I love going to these things. But now, now that we see Flight of Passage a little while later, we see that the lines are maybe two hours, sometimes an hour and a half, depending upon the time of day and the time of year. And then you wonder, okay, so should I have waited a few more, it's actually years for Flight of Passage, to go and then save some time, or should I go with that opening and feel that excitement of something brand new? The answer is there's no right answer, but today we're gonna go over the positives and negatives of both. First, let's start off with the number of new things at Disney. Every single year, you seem to see something new, whether it's some small change like the donut box here for the Food and Wine Festival or something bigger, but the bigger ones happen less frequently. The smaller changes at Disney are something to smile about, absolutely, but we're focusing on those bigger ones, big attractions. Should you come out of your way? Should you make a whole trip out of the opening day. One of the biggest positives to doing that is very clear, the excitement that you feel, the brand new attraction show or restaurant. A big part of that decision comes to your love of something magical. If you love something like Moana, then you might want to be here for the opening of Journey into the Water, which is that interactive experience coming to Epcot in the future. But maybe you're not that big of a fan of Moana, then maybe you can just wait until you get back here next to see it. We all have IPs that we love, but what if you're like me and you just love all of it? then at what stage do you come to Epcot and see all of these changes? Because you know they're going to be released bit by bit. They're not just all gonna come out at once. That's a more difficult question to answer. If you're looking for that feeling of excitement, the exhilaration that comes with the opening of something new, I recommend one of the bigger attractions, like the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. That is sure to be one of those main highlight attractions that just attracts crowds and has that general feeling of super excitement as you make your way there. Clearly there are a tremendous amount amount of different things that you can see and experience as they open, but another big question mark that comes up, if I don't go to something when it opens, or I don't see something while it's around for a certain period of time, how long until it's gone? That's a question that no one can answer. Change is a constant at Walt Disney World. Whether it's the change of one attraction to another or a brand new building, it's just constant change. Constant change comes down to what you like. Now the festivals are a little bit of a unique case when it comes to things that are new at Disney because the festivals happen year after year. It's subtle differences to the menus and the kiosks that are the difference. There's an interesting thought when it comes to the opening of something new at Disney. It's that feeling of seeing it before everyone else. That's the honest feeling, it is. And there is something to be said about that. As, a, as human beings, we like to be you know, the first to see something brand new. But is it required to have fun? No, it's not. No, it is not. And I think one example that I can give you is, you know, based on myself, when it comes to being the first to do something or first to see something, it comes down to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. I love Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, and I have not been back this year. Despite the fact that I really want to, I just, I haven't been able to do it yet. I will very soon, definitely gonna do it this year, but I haven't prioritized it the way that I will maybe in future years. And that doesn't mean that I don't love it, it just means that I'm prioritizing other things. Same thing goes for the new attractions that come around. Let's say Mary Poppins opens up and, oh, I love it, I wanna go, I wanna see it, but I wanna prioritize other things at Walt Disney World. And we're coming back to that list of priorities that you have when you're on vacation. Being the first to experience something is a lot of fun, I will not take away from that, but it doesn't hurt to experience it first yourself. You get the chance to say, I love this for myself. I, it doesn't matter, you know, I've seen movies before, right, as an example. I've seen movies and I loved a movie and the critics said oh I didn't like this movie at all All the critics said I didn't like this movie but I loved it personally and we all have different tastes for different things so even though maybe we're not the first to experience something it doesn't mean it's less magical it just means that our first experience is later on our first experience that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about opening up new attractions 
do I need to be the first one or can I just experience it first for myself? So we know some of the positives and negatives, so the opening of something brand new at Disney, but the big question, should you create your trip based on the opening of something new? The truth of the matter is I do recommend it, especially if it's something that you like, but keep in mind, this is something very important. Things don't always open right on time or something happens, you know, right after an opening where it gets delayed for a little while and then it's like fully open, like a new ride, new transportation system, things happen, that's the way the world works. So the idea that you're there for opening and then maybe there's a slight delay, that can really, really hurt. So maybe it doesn't hurt to give it a few days after opening to experience that, so to make sure that all the kinks are out of the way. That's just something that you may wanna keep in mind. If you wanted to be there for opening, it is a magical experience, but if you only get to go out maybe, say twice a year, once a year, once every few years, you may wanna wait a few weeks after something brand new is opening so you're sure all the kinks are out. On that same note, something new for you can be something as simple as a new item from the Food and Wine Festival. And the list of items for the Food and Wine Festival, let me tell you, is endless, absolutely endless. So you're always gonna find something new. So it gets back to the definition of what is new. What's new for you? I think that's a better way to approach the subject. Of course, one of the biggest negatives for opening up a new attraction, seeing a brand new show in the parks, or just going to a brand new restaurant, depending on the restaurant, are the number of crowds. You start to get extremely crowded with the more popular the item is. For example, something like Pandora World of Avatar, you're gonna end up parking at the end of the parking lot every single day you're there, simply because there are thousands of other people who want to see that new land as well. Now that's a good reason right there to stay at one of the Disney resorts. If you're staying there, then you don't really worry about parking too much. Then you're only worried about the crowds inside the park, which are still gonna be pretty intense. Now, if you're like me, you may love going with the crowds. It just kind of exhilarates you. And for me, that's actually a big part of it. I love being there with the crowds because yes, you are packed in and it's very, very crowded, but that's not every day. You know it's for something special and you get a special feeling when you're there for this so there's there's something to be said for the crowds in that way but you have to know yourself because I've spoken to friends who said Michael how how can you do this how how can you go when there are thousands of people this close to you the whole time and it just comes down to what you enjoy I enjoy it not I don't want that every day. I don't want that kind of crowds every day. But some days, for something extra special, it adds to the hype. One big advantage to going for the opening of a brand new attraction or a show is to avoid spoilers. Let's admit it, in today's day and age, it is extremely difficult to avoid all of the spoilers. There are just so many, and they're all over. It's, you know, you're scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, and you see a video of the new attraction or maybe pictures of the new area, and you don't want to see them. So it's, it's very difficult to avoid, and I personally am going to do my best to combat this by kind of giving you a little warning before I spoil something that's brand new so that you can skip it if you want to. But if you're there for the opening of something brand new, you can avoid all that because you're there at the same time that the pictures are being taken or the video is being taken so that you're not spoiled. That being said, if you're really thinking about it, you're trying to make an active thought to avoid spoilers, it is possible to do. You can avoid them, it's just difficult. Another thing to watch out for when thinking about going for the opening of a new a big thing, like big land, for example, Pandora World of Avatar, is to consider price. And I'm not talking about the price of the land itself, Disney's already built it. I'm talking about the price of the merchandise, gonna be more expensive with a special limited edition. And this one was really interesting to me, the price of the resort that you wanna stay at when you're here. I still remember the opening of Pandora World of Avatar. It was so magical, I loved it, I'm so glad we went, but I was, remember being shocked, absolutely shocked, by the price of the resort room. I think we stayed at, was it Art of Animation? I think it was Art of Animation. And it was just so much more than I was expecting. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is much more, but that's because it's the opening. So these kind of things do vary. Now, in addition to crowds everywhere around, those transportation options like the monorail get extremely crowded, very, very crowded. So that's something else to think about. It's true that certain times of year do bring bigger crowds at Walt Disney World, but the opening brings just abnormally large crowds to Walt Disney World. So it's just, it's some factor that you have to take into your mind. When you go, you just say, okay, the only thing I'm focusing on is this opening for the whole day. And if you can do that, if you can set everything else aside and say it's just about this one thing today, I think you're gonna be really happy with it. Another big advantage is that when you come for the opening of something and you're not at that specific thing, say Pandora World of Avatar, and instead you decide to come to Magic Kingdom as an example, you might find lower lines 
for these standard attractions. Not every time, but sometimes. And with lower crowds on some of these standard attractions, it gives you more time to hone those skills to maybe become a galactic hero. And with lower crowds at some of your favorite attractions, it can lead to better experiences like almost getting galactic hero. Almost. Well, just keep practicing with those lower crowds. So is it worth it? Is it worth it to create an entire vacation just to see the opening of a new land, a new show, a new attraction at Walt Disney World? The short answer is yes, it's definitely worth it. But is it worth it to you? I would say, again, it depends on you. If you don't mind seeing more of those crowds and you really don't want to be spoiled with what's new at Walt Disney World and you just love the excitement of being there for the brand new thing that opens up, I would say do it. I really, really would. To me, that has actually been one of the most memorable moments at Walt Disney World for me in recent years to be here for something brand new, something opening, something special. But if you really don't mind not being there for the very first day of operation of a brand new land or attraction or whatever it is, then I would actually recommend you hold off on opening day and instead go when it's a little bit less expensive and there are far fewer crowds in the park and in that land with you. A good recent example, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. When it first opened, the crowds were intense, extremely intense. But now that it's been open for a while and we're into the holidays here at Walt Disney World, lines are actually relatively short. It's super nice to experience it without as many people trying to get into the same spot as you are. Those are my thoughts about the opening of new rides, shows, and attractions at Walt Disney World. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Is it worth it to you to be there for the brand new attraction that's opening right over there, Tron Light Cycle? Or would you rather wait for something else, maybe the 50th anniversary of the Magic Kingdom, just as an example? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day.